Welcome back everyone to another video and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to level up fast and quickly in GTA 5 Online. Now the good thing about this is there's actually no level requirements or anything you need in order to get started. But for this one I do have a couple recommendations. So because of the way the mission is going to play out we're going to need some protection. There is two vehicles I recommend for this. The first one, which is the cheapest option, is the Armored Karuma that you can purchase as Southern San Andreas Super Autos for $525,000. Now, the reason I recommend this vehicle is because it's A, it's bulletproof, and B, it's pretty quick. And for this one, you're going to actually be revolving yourself around a lot of enemies, which will be shooting at you, so you need something to protect yourself. And the cheapest option for this one is the Armored Karuma. Now, if you want something that can not only give you some protection so no one can shoot you, also has some missiles to make this mission 10 times better, is going to be the Kanjali tank that you can purchase from Warstock Cash and Carry for a price of $2,895,000. Yes, it is way more expensive than the Armored Kruma, but not only is there any chance that you can actually get shot through it, but it also has a massive cannon in the front as well as a machine gun, which I believe the machine gun can only be used by another player. So you're only going to be using this cannon. Now if you don't have that and there's another vehicle that we can use. Which is actually going to be the Torridor. It is way more expensive but this is an option that you can have. And has unlimited missiles so you can never run out of them. So once you have that done you are ready to go. So what you want to do is once you make your way into any GT Online session. What you want to do from here is press options, go to online, go over to jobs, go over to play jobs, go over to rocks are created. You want to then head over to missions and keep going until you find RV nearly there. So here's the mission right here. Of course, this unlocks at rank one. So you can do this just starting in the game. And for this one, you can also do this by yourself, which is why I chose this one, unlike some of the other ones. So once you're ready, what you want to do is go ahead and start it up. In the settings menu, you want to set the difficulty to hard mode for the most amount of cash and RP. Also, you can purchase super heavy armor if you want to, but you really don't need it. From here, just confirm settings and then launch the job. So whenever you launch the job, you want to first, depending on what vehicle you're using, if you're using the armored Karuma, you can just go ahead and drive there or the Torridor, but if you're using the Kajali tank, which I'm going to be using for this, it's better to first drive there and then call it in after because of how slow it is. So just go ahead and do that first. What we're going to be doing is still in a brigade, which is going to be near the actual airfield. So it's going to be right over here where the blue dot is. So let's go ahead and make our way there. So now that I'm near the brigade and I just called my Kanjali tank in or whatever you're going to use for this, we're ready to go. So around the brigade, it's going to be a ton of enemies. Now, I don't recommend you guys using the Kanjali tank to shoot them because if it hits one of these vehicles, it's going to create like a domino effect and explode every vehicle and it could damage or potentially actually destroy the brigade. So don't use the Kanjali tank, just go and take them out first. There's only four of them in total, so it shouldn't be that hard to kill them. Alright, so now that I've got everyone down, what you want to do is quickly enter the brigade. Give enough time to say return the brigade. And then after that, you want to get out. And then you want to run right over to your Kanjali tank as enemies will spawn in in vehicles. So you got to be really quick with this one. I should have probably, you know, went a little bit closer in. But I shouldn't make it in time. So what's going to happen, of course, is that there's going to be a bunch of trucks that spawn in. That's actually them right there. And what happens is you can destroy them and each one gives you 100 RP as there's four people inside of there. So what happens is that these guys actually spawn in continuously and over and over. So what we're going to now do, because it's kind of like an awkward place to try to shoot them, we're going to go over to the Sandy Shores airfield. We're going to go to the very end of it. And what happens is that they're actually going to spawn in this way and we can shoot them in a direct line. So let's go ahead and make our way there. So now that I arrived at the very end of the Sandy Shores airfield, they're going to spawn directly in front of me just like that. Now the big trucks like this one does have two people, which gives you 62 RP per truck kill. So you want to go ahead, just keep doing this. They spawn continuously over and over. 
And what happens is that you can do this until it stops giving you RP for them. Now, I believe if you do this over and over, just like I'm doing it, it takes around 5 to 10 minutes before they stop giving RP. And if that happens, that's totally fine. I'll tell you guys exactly what to do when that happens. So I'm just going to go ahead and do this over and over. And as well as at the end of this, I will count to see what the total RP amount is. And there we go. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep doing this until they stop giving RP. Now, if you notice on the top of my screen here, it is actually adding up all the RP as we're doing this. And it's just continuously going over and over. Now, because I'm such a high level, it doesn't honestly look like that much. But for anyone who's level, you know, under level 100, this is really good. And your RP amount is going to add up in the long run. So it looks like I have now just stopped getting RP. Yeah, so it looks like it. Now we have two different options. You have the options of actually stealing the brigade and actually completing the mission for a little bit more RP. Or the other way, which I usually do it because it's much quicker, is you just let them kill you. That way it restarts the mission and you can keep doing this back to back without having to like go through the loading times of like logging into another mission and everything like that. Now of course with this being on hard mode, you do have to get eliminated twice for it to actually end the mission. So just give it a minute and that should happen. And so there we go. Now it says that we failed the mission. And then from here it's going to give us a little bit of money in RP. But nothing really like, you know, good. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is count up the total RP amount that we got. For blowing up the vehicles. As well as how long it took to do this mission. And how long it took to do everything like that. So let me go ahead and do that now. I just got done adding the total amount of RP. Added the RP for each RP kill that we got for blowing up the vehicles, as well as the RP we got for actually ending the mission, which gave us a little bit of RP for it. So the total for this was 9,491 RP, with the RP for blowing up the vehicles at 7,825 RP, and the RP we got for actually ending the mission was 1,665 RP. Now, the important question which can make this very good or very bad is how long did it take me to actually do this? So I added up just the entire mission itself, even the drive, and that added up to a total of 11 minutes and 14 seconds. So every 11 minutes you can make a total of 9,000 to 10,000 RP. And keep in mind, it's going to actually cut a big timer if you actually restart the mission instead of having to, you know, spawn back in the game and then restart it and then have to do that long drive. If you are just to restart it, it's going to spawn you right near the brigade. So that drive you have to do is not going to be that long. Or what you could do is actually go back into an invite only session and then you can actually set your spawn location to last location. That way, whenever you start the job, it takes you to the last location, which is near the Sandy Shores airfield. So there we go. That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe for more GTA 5 videos and content like this. With that being said, you guys have a great one. Stay safe out there and goodbye.